Hey guys, and welcome back to another session here in the Lumix Lounge here in Nashville, Tennessee at Imaging USA 2015. I'm sitting here on stage with James Schmelzer. He's a photographer who's doing a lot of cool stuff with 4K, specifically in the genre of, of portraiture. And we're going to talk about that. So portraiture and one of the other topics that we talked about in an earlier session, and that's sort of the Flixel animated cinemagraph type stuff. So we're going to talk about all that stuff, what he's using to do that, how he does it, and why he's doing it. So James, welcome. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, man, it's good to have you on here. So what's, what's your history in photography? How'd you get started in all this stuff? Well, at an early age, I always liked cameras and stuff, mm -hmm. but I was really a musician. Oh. And then I realized that it's very difficult to have a band and everybody stick together over all those years. Yeah, so yeah. I did get inspired by a photographer that I just came across, and I saw his work, and it really just inspired me to want to be a photographer. Yeah. So I tried a little bit of different types of photography, food, and I'm in Detroit, so automotive, of course, and a little bit of everything. I kind of fell into the niche market where I'm a people person, and I need to be around people, and I kind of bounce off of that. So I moved to New York, kind of got into fashion photography, and it seemed kind of easy. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't need me. It was all hair and makeup and a beautiful model, and I yeah. wasn't the star. They were. You were a cog in the wheel. I was caught in the wheel, and, yeah. the, you know, they got a beautiful model. Everybody likes her. You know, what am I going to do to stand out? So then I heard about the professional photographers of America, yeah. and that there was rules, like the hand can't be bigger than the face, and the, the angle of the hand, the tilt of the head, lighting rudiments, and all the things that there was rules, and I thought, this is challenging. Yeah. you got to be really good. Whereas fashion is really the star is, the gorgeous model, the set design and all. Now, yeah. I love fashion and I do do it. So my position right now is a mixture of everything. Yeah. The way that I made a living, though, because I've been at this for 30 years, was doing high school senior portraits and weddings. Mm -hmm. And through that, I made a living and paid for my family and all that. And, and life's been really good. And how's that business? That, you know, I know about the wedding business and, and those economics. Yep. But what about the, the high school senior portraits? How's that going? Well, the biggest thing changing in the high school senior portraits right now is they don't want to buy 8x10s anymore. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest labs in the United States just closed down out of California because nobody was buying 8x10s. Who was that? Which lab was that? White House Custom Color. White House shut down. My favorite lab, they opened up another one in California and they closed it down. Wow. Why? Wow. They're saying nobody's buying 8x10s. So this generation now, what are they looking for? They're looking for electronic medium. They're looking to put it on here. Yeah, they want to put it on Instagram, gonna, Facebook. Yeah, their parents might want an eight by ten. These kids want not to do it. They want electronic imaging. Yeah, yeah. Which puts me in this booth. And that's what you're doing, right? So, yeah. see, that's cool. And that to be nimble enough to respond to business ebbs and flows yeah. is the hallmark of a good business person, you know. Yeah. And I want to talk about that with you too, because you've been doing this for a while. So you're in it. In it. In order to keep doing this, you have in. Being a photographer, you also have to be an excellent business person. There's right? a lot of great photographers that they can't sink. run a business. Yeah, so they sink. Yeah. So, you know, we'll slight tangent on this. What okay. does it take to get good on the business side of things? On the business end, I think that you have to keep your eyes out there. You, first of all, if you're going to do pricing, you better price yourself to that market. Yeah. See what the going rate is. See what you can get out of them. But business on my end was really more of over-delivering. Mm -hmm. When someone comes in the door, you treat them everyone special. Mm -hmm. I'll fix your clothes. I'll fix the lighting. I will do everything that I can to make you realize that I'm trying for you. Yeah. You're not going to get pushed through the door. Yeah. Then I'm not going to tell you that you're going to get something that's not up to a par and not up to a level. And then when you get it, you're not going to overpay for it. You're going to pay the going rate, but then I might give you something extra. That's called over-delivering. Yeah, under-promise, over-deliver. Correct. And what, are they, what else? Surprise and delight the client. Yes. Right? It's easy. Yeah. It's easy. Easier said than done, though. Correct. Right? So you've been doing this for a while. So what? So we're sitting in the Panasonic booth, like That's I correct. said. And, uh, you know, they're... They're on fire with these small mirrorless cameras, yep. and one of the big themes of this show is 4K Correct. photography, and specifically extracting frames from 4K and doing interesting things Correct. and motion and all that. How did you come into this fold? Okay, so I'm in New York at the big photo convention, mm -hmm. and I'm with Westcott Company, so I help light the set yep. for the photo shoot when you introduce the GH4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I'm there and they've got 4K TVs all around this. I walk in, I'm just, I was just, I was struck yeah. by the imagery. And I'm like, what is this? What is going on? And mm -hmm. what's a cinemagraph? And I'm like, it's just, I was just floored at something that was so unique. And I thought, I got to jump into this. Mm -hmm. And so then I started talking there and all that. And then when Panasonic came out with this G4, I was just floored that they were honest enough to bring out a camera that wasn't out of anybody's range. I don't want to tell somebody, go buy this or go buy this or I'm using this and it's out of everybody's price range. Right. It's not realistic. Yeah. You know, this is not a corporate company. These are mom and pop photographers that would like to get a beautiful camera at an awesome price. Yeah, but it, with that price and the and the low price of these, like you know, what, I forget what the entry level on the GH4 yep. is twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah. Um, at that price level, a lot of photographers would say, you know, it can't be good if it's that cheap. You know, it, if, in order for it to be a pro level, it's going to have to cost me at least two thousand, twenty five hundred dollars. Correct. What do you, you clearly don't subscribe to that? What do you What do you think about the whole price perception piece of it? I think that a lot of times we're getting over we're, we're just over we're getting over people are overcharging us. Yeah, yeah. And when you find out about these cameras and you try it and all that, I mean, you're overwhelmed, but mm -hmm. really the reason why I wanted 4K, I mean, photographers don't understand why would you use 4K? Right. It's not going to help me. Right. You know, I'm what not is a videographer? It? What do I need 4K for? Yeah, what do for? I need 4K for? Come on. But he, yeah. here's the deal. If you have 4K, you could zoom in on it, and it would still be 1080p if you wanted. After you've zoomed in on it, mm -hmm. for and, me the and most pan around that zoom, right? Yeah. For me, the most important thing was is that I do these cinemagraphs, which are part photo and part movie. Mm -hmm. But if this guy here, if I need to touch him up, I'm going to extract a still frame out of there. Yeah. So obviously, there's 24 frames a second. A movie is just a bunch of stills going fast. Yep. Yep. If that single frame is an 8 meg file at 4K, that means I could take a still out of there, touch it up in Photoshop, and put it back into the movie. That's why I really wanted 4K. And, and let's talk about that piece a little bit, you know, from a couple of different angles, the, okay. the cinemagraph standpoint. Yeah. So you saw this technology demonstrated at That's Photo correct. Plus Expo, yep. and you're like, okay, I, I, I want some of that. You know, so you dive into it, and you start making things like this. Now, is this a saleable image? Are you doing these for clients, or are you still in the, in the experimental phase? No, these are very sellable. This is mm -hmm. what they want, something different. Yeah. You show them one of these, they're going to be like, wow. Yeah. They're, they're not, I mean, these kids, they're looking for something, just like me as a photographer. You don't think I'm looking for the cutting edge of what's new and what's fresh? Yeah. You want to be at the front of the train or the back of the train? Yeah. I'm going to jump in. So I got a learning curve. Just what, I was a one of the first photographers in North America to be digital. Wow. Do you think I wanted to go through all that pain? Do you know how hard <laughs> that was back then? Yeah. yeah. But you got to do it to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, it's not easy being a pioneer. No. Right? Not easy. So when you, when you look at these, and I, I understand what you're saying completely, because we're living, especially when you look at the under, let's say under 25, 30 crowd that are might be using Vine and, and services like that, and Instagram, right, with video in there, you are, you're looking at, you're looking at uh, a certain quality or lack thereof of the video, right, you're shaky, whatever, you know, somebody right. running through the house screaming or right. throwing water on somebody, you know. And then when you bust out with something like this, yep. it's a contrast to what they've been seeing. So it immediately Correct. stands out. Yep. How do you market this to the, to the students? Do you, like, what, what's the, the actual well, sit-down Well, what's great flow? about it is that once you upload it, you've already got all the data there that you can email to them. Yeah. So they can instantly, I can instantly, soon as this, this takes me five minutes to do. This is not a lot of work. Yeah. Because with this the This is five minutes to do this. The Cinemagraph software? Yeah. I this kid here stood there for six seconds. Then I pulled the move. I only recorded him for six seconds. Yeah. Those are smoke bombs going off in the background. With while he was standing there. Yeah. Okay. So this the whole thing's real. Yeah. I mean, it didn't take long to set up. Then it, with the cinematograph software, you just you, you, you make a still frame and then you release the thing. He's not moving. You just got to go in there. It doesn't take that long to do. And then you put it in a loop where it keeps on going around. Yeah. And the then hard go. part is that. You now we are separating the amateurs from the pros. Mm -hmm. The amateurs do everything in Photoshop. 
I took yeah. Photoshop off my computer. Just joking. I'm just saying, get yeah. rid of Photoshop. Yeah. Don't be doing everything in Photoshop. Yeah. Once everybody else tries to do this, they can't do it because they can't do it in Photoshop and sit there and manipulate the whole thing, and yeah. they can't do it with their flash, and they can't sit there and build up all the lighting. Mm -hmm. So now we're separating the pros from the amateurs. This is called shot with video lights. Yeah. You it's can't cheat. It is what it is. It There's is nothing is. in there that's not real. I want to talk. That's perfect segue because the, you know, we, we talk about a lot about the the new extraction or harvesting frames from 4K video yeah. as for portraiture and fashion yeah. and that sort yeah. of thing. Um, but the the part that we gloss over is the lighting piece of it. You know, because a lot of photographers. You know, light is still photographers, it's flash, it's strobe. Yep. You know, some of them are moving to continuous, but it's, yep. it's by and large, it's strobe, it, and you freeze the motion, you got it, boom, that's yep. been what we've been doing for decades now. And then play in Photoshop all day long and, and fix it, because you couldn't get the lighting right. Exactly, and now we're doing continuous lights. So tell me about that. Is it, are we at that point now where continuous lights are good well, enough? Well, you know, if you think about it, who do you really inspire as a great cinema photographer or photographer? Yeah. Cinema photographers... They can't cheat. The lighting is right on the money for everything mm -hmm. instead of using a flash and then fixing it all. So to yeah. do this, you're going to need video lights. Mm -hmm. And then the lights have to be in the exact position with great patterns of light. See, this is what gets me. The new generation now, they go, I'm available light for time. Whatever right. is available. What right. if it's not good lighting? Right. If it's not good lighting and that's what's available... Let's fix it. It can be really easy. And what's nice about available light or using video lights, mm -hmm. what you see is what you get. Yeah. Set the light up, learn lighting, take some classes, and it's actually a lot easier than flash. Yeah. And the other piece of it is if you're doing that and you're using continuous lights, whether it be you know, LEDs or fluorescence, what kind of fluorescence, whatever, um, is that enough light to get... The, to capture the situation because a lot of you know photographers will say well you know what I got I have these strobes that I use and they put out 400 watt seconds of light that Correct. allows me to you know I can set my aperture at whatever I want and my shutter speed or whatever I want boom correct. and I got it that's correct I go in this direction yeah I'm at the mercy of how much light that these can put out that's correct is, is, how welcome does, to my world yeah how do you reconcile do you think that? this stuff's easy yes but no. I want it to be I want it to be a challenge mm -hmm. I want to blow everybody away out there and stand out in the crowd like it used to be yeah now it's everybody's a photographer yeah so yes. now if I can take this wasn't that hard mm -hmm. I went to old uh, building mm-hmm Brought out a video light in the back, aimed at him, give the rim light, another one over here, and one up high in the front to light his face. Yeah. Let off two colored smoke bombs, one on each side, let the smoke go by, shoot for six seconds, get out of there. And that's it. And look what you're coming up with. And yeah. you know what? The creativity level is endless. Mm -hmm. What's great about this is it's going to challenge you to come up with stuff that's different. Yeah, yeah. So... Talk to that a little bit. What's next for you? Like what? what next are, for me, I'm yeah. going to go buy a graffiti machine that shoots graffiti all <laughs> over. I'm going to go buy the flurry snow machine and make snow in the there summertime. Yeah. I'm going to get a bubble machine. Get I'm going to get every kind of machine. machine. Yeah. I'm going to think of everything that I can think of. Yeah. I don't care if it's sparklers. I don't care if it's lovebirds flying by. I'll think of something. I'll come up with something. That's awesome. You, I, can I can feel the excitement I, for this I, technology. I have more energy in my life right now, and I'm more excited about everything more and, and to be a to, to be at a level where you can just do things quicker and faster and easier i mean am i a better photographer now than i was 30 years ago maybe mm -hmm. i think the most important thing is i'm faster yeah. and more accurate if you watched me do this shot we weren't there very long now what are you shooting with as we wrap this up what what what's your kit that you were on location with i use the westcott's they have these lights called skylux mm -hmm. and they're led lights and I bring a generator with me, just mm -hmm. a little Honda generator, and I'll plug the lights into that and go anywhere. Yeah. If you see some of my other ones shot in the city streets in Detroit, and I throw my orange cones out there and block off the street because there's no police anyways. Yeah. And then I do my stuff, and I have fun, and try to think of everything I can think of. And that's it. What about what about hardware or on the, the camera side? What are you shooting with? <clears throat> I use the Panasonic GH4 okay. because... It's easy enough to put it onto 4K and, and then hit the button shoot and my roll. six second clips. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you're on a tripod always. Right? And, well, I guess the most important thing is just like anything, 
I teach photography. I'm over in this booth over here, and I'm teaching. You've got all these photographers who are taking 3,000 shots. You know yeah. what I told them? Mm. Take one picture. Just take one. Yeah. Think about your background. Think about your composition. It's the, all the basics. Don't center your subject. Put them off. Shoot low. Get rid of the ground. Yeah. All the basics. Take one shot. Be done, but think about it. Yeah. The newer generation just wants to shoot and shoot. I got Spray a kid work, pray, Yeah, right? I got a kid working for me. It's like you took three thousand pictures. You want me to pay you to develop three thousand pictures? Uh -huh. yeah. And can you put those three thousand pictures on batch, mm -hmm. or are you going to sit there and develop them all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a spray and pray, right? Yeah. Get out there and hey, yeah. I, I have no. a sixty-four gig card in here. I'm going right. to fill it up. Why not? Right. And what's great about this camera? It's got the histogram. It's got peaking. Yeah. It's got everything built right into there. Yep. And when you're shooting video, you just got to really make sure that your shutter speed's at a 60th so you don't clip the frames. It's double your flame rate. Yeah. So if you do that, now you're, the only thing you got to deal with is your apertures. Now, let's wrap this up. I know you, you've got some training online or tutorial that you've written. Where's all sure. this stuff up? Where, where can people go to see more of this stuff of yours? Well, once you buy the software, mm -hmm. which is reasonable too. The Cinemagraph software. The Cinemagraph software is like $40 for 1080p. I think mm -hmm. it's 100 less than $100 for 4K. Yeah. It's not a lot of money to get into the game to be that fast. Yeah. And when you buy the software, there are some tutorials that I help them produce that teach you how to do that. Oh, that are in those, and those are yours. It comes on the software. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for coming on, James. Thank it's you. A, it's a pleasure chatting with yep. you. I can feel the excitement. <laughs> I'm energetic. Burning. I feel like you want to run off the stage I'm and go energetic. make another one of these things right now. <laughs> I think life should be fun. I think we should have fun. And I think we should appreciate a beautiful company like Panasonic that we can do great work like this and not that costly. Yeah. So if you really want, you could just go buy three or four cameras instead <laughs> of one of Brand X. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure you get that Cinemagraph Pro, right? Right. Yeah. So thank well, you for having me on your show. Yeah, I appreciate the likewise. time. Likewise. It's a pleasure thank chatting you. with you. Yep. All right, guys, that's it for this session here at Imaging USA 2015. Um, if you want to see more of this video or other ones like it, just head over to lumixlounge.com. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. Take it easy.